My name is Mark and welcome to the Ten Acre Woods. Now over the past, uh, I don't know, uh, since the summer anyway, since midsummer, uh, we had one animal that I hadn't actually been able to find, uh, but I've been wanting to show you. So it's been inside the house and what it was, or what it is, uh, is in here. So let's see if you can figure out what this is. Uh, let's see here, let's open up move this out of the way and I was able to find uh, let's see here we go right here Woo! there we go so this is a and you can't really see it very good but a blue spotted salamander and there he is so there's two of them in there and what the story is with these guys we'll put you back little buddy and cover you up here we go. There's two of them in there. They're probably in that same area. Um, but we had them in a smaller uh, terrarium, uh, this guy here, uh, and Tiana moved them out into this larger one. So uh, you don't want to handle them too much. You know, I picked uh, this one up for a short amount of time. I made sure I washed my hands first because the salt that's on your hands can, uh, can actually sting these guys. These are amphibians. Uh, they Basically, um, the, the, when handling them, your hand, of course, is, is quite warm, and the danger is you can warm their temperature up. So they're basically in a state of hibernation now. Uh, we do put in some bugs. They'll come out from time to time and go and eat bugs and mealworms uh, and all kinds of stuff in there. So the story with these guys were my daughter had, uh, had a friend at school, and she had found these guys in the city and gave them to Tiana and Tiana brought them out and we thought it would be a nice little educational thing to show people. Uh, the salamanders, uh, you don't see them a whole lot because they are of course buried and dug underneath uh, uh, underneath the dirt from a lot of the uh, a lot of the times. You'll find them under, if you have a, a bale of shingles that have been sitting there for a while or a rock, uh, you, you'll run into them. Um, but the cold weather came and of course we're not going to put them outside uh, with the cold weather so we're going to leave them inside here and then when it gets warm outside again we'll take them out and uh, we'll put them back out into their natural environment so that's them so before i take you outside and talk about cold weather and how it affects our animals uh, i wanted to talk about uh, our guys atlas atlas Hi. So Atlas is a Bernese mountain dog. And what he's doing at the top of the stairs there is we have a cat called Nix. Uh, it's a little kitten. And he has fallen in love with this kitten and wants to be around it. But the dogs know they're not allowed downstairs. Atlas, where's Nix? Where is she? Hey. So uh, Atlas, if I go and grab... You'll, you'll see, well, it's not too bad. There's a little bit of hair. Um, what is that? Is that your, you want to eat your hair? No. <laughs> so uh, Atlas has been an outside dog most of the winter, but when it got really cold out, of course, we can't leave him outside. Um, it's just, it's too cold. Uh, shouldn't be out there. Right, buddy? Plus, he wants to be in with his new best friend. So now that it's warmed up, uh, now he's spending the nights inside the house. Now he is accustomed to it, and these two here, Toby, the boy, and Maggie, whenever you say Maggie's name, she gets excited. So you can see Maggie's hair. Uh, she is a, well, they're both terriers, and uh, they're both West Highland white terriers. And she is all scruffy, but we've left her that way because uh, we shave them in the spring. So and we'll shave them back. I'll throw up a little picture right here of what they look like normally when they're properly shaven. And what is it, buddy? You want to go outside? Oh, you want to go outside? So, and that's Toby. And of course, we'll shave him up too. So we keep these guys uh, a little bit longer hair for the winter time, uh, just because, uh, well, you wouldn't want to go outside without any clothes on. So we figured we'll leave their clothes on. We used to... Uh, we used to have a little, uh, a little booties for her, and uh, yeah, everybody goes out. Little booties for her and a little jacket that goes around here somewhere. Um, but um, if you've ever searched YouTube for dog wearing boots, uh, you know how that works out. 
So after all this extreme weather we've been having, uh, cold, cold, uh, it's actually warmed up. So it's, uh, I think it's about minus five degrees Celsius right now. Uh, a lot better th from the minus 35 degrees we have been having over the last few weeks. Uh, so it's supposed to remain warm for the next few weeks. So that's great, a good time to get out and, and do a few things uh, before it gets cold again. Now, one thing that uh, had happened, oh, you know, of course, four days before it started to warm up was this here is our septic field and yeah it froze so you can actually see well there's a rabbit um and i did point this out on one of the other videos there's a rabbit over there uh, and what the rabbits are doing is they are uncovering the septic field that is grass so that's the field right there. So not far below is are the pipes for the septic field. Uh, and they come in on this end and then run through. Uh, so we didn't put straw on the uh, septic field because we've gone years and years without having to do it. And figured, well, if we don't have to do it, why, why change what isn't broke? Uh, well, I, there's a good reason why you should reconsider. <laughs> so the line runs uh, from that from the house across here uh, and down in here. We do have a septic tank just over there. So what we're having to do now is uh, just call and get, um, get a septic tank uh, blown out or sucked out or whatever they do with it. So of course we're on modified water where we're doing our laundry instead of putting it into the drain. Uh, to go into the septic tank. We're putting it actually into a garbage bin and then um, uh, dumping that outside so the gray water uh, can just go outside. So we'll make do. Uh, you know, it is, uh, we've still got about three months before it warms up. Uh, but hey, you know, uh, at least we're not down by the river cracking open the ice uh, doing our laundry in a, in a hole. So we've come a long ways uh, since that time. <laughs> So we'll go inside and um, what I want to talk about today is um, how we deal with this kind of weather in this climate. And I've had some questions about um, temperature and, and, and why don't you heat the barn and what about the humidity? Can you run a dehumidifier? So there's a lot of factors there that we have considered and you know tried and tested and some failed and some passed. So uh, I'd like to give you that information here in this video. So maybe you don't have to do that trial process if you do live in a cold environment. So one thing in here, there is a plug-in back in there. And this red plug-in goes in and through the wall over into the uh, barn. So what that is for is that's for a heat trace line. Now, this used to be, our, our trailer used to be here years ago, and then we had built on this addition and since sold the trailer and moved the mudroom into this area here. So the water line that went into the trailer uh, was still there and it still went out to the septic field. So the septic field, if we look back outside again, uh, it's a little hard to see, but right behind this uh, tree over here, over by the play structure, is the well. So we've got one line, the original line that came across here and into the trailer that was over there, which is the line we're using for the farm. And when they built the house, uh, the line went directly up over to the house. So they didn't cap anything off. We actually capped it off at this end and figured, well, down the road uh, you know we were still using it in the summertime but it kept on freezing in the winter time uh, so it's pretty much underneath this part of the building here we're not going to dig it up and insulate it so what we ended up doing was uh, here is the water line here so that red cord it's a little dusty <laughs> which comes in right here and goes into this timer uh, now there is a heat trace line that's plugged into this that goes right into the pipe and goes inside the pipe to keep it warm. Uh, so this here line will warm up 
Now the reason why it's on a timer is I thought this was an auto adjusting that would uh, come up to a certain temperature and keep it a certain temperature. Uh, this one here is an always on, so it's an element that just remains on, so water would actually come out of our tap hot. So I went and I plugged this timer in here and it's on for 15 minutes, it's off for half an hour, on for 15, off for half an hour. Uh, so that works and it's a little bit warm when it comes out initially, but it's not like hot. Uh, so that's how we deal with that water and now we have water here. So hopefully our water line doesn't freeze. Now with the barn itself, um, we have, hi Lucy. Uh, and originally when we were building this, I thought, okay, so maybe we'll put pour this concrete, maybe we'll put some heat trace lines to have a heated floor. Uh, and then, uh, well, we got down to it and, and I, I didn't do it and I was contemplating and I'm kind of happy that we didn't do it uh, because this building is pretty warm in here. So we have our ventilation. We don't heat this building. We don't have any heat lamps. Hi girls. I see you girls have a Christmas tree. Did Tara bring you a Christmas tree? Are you enjoying it? So I mentioned, uh, I think the last video I mentioned about the pine, that it's a good dewormer. Um, and, but you have to watch, from what I've been reading, you have to watch with uh, pregnant does, that you don't give them too much because it does have some kind of toxicity in it that, um, that helps also in the deworming. So there's uh, contradictory information out there on the internet, uh, you know, surprise, surprise. But um, from what I understand, from what I've read, from what we've done, we have given them pine and um, they love it. So there's probably one outside as well. I see there's uh, one in here. Woo! There's one in here as well. Everybody's got their little uh, taste of outside. Okay, so getting back to what I was talking about, the, uh, the exhaust fan that is over there that's rigged up to a temperature gauge set to uh, uh, air conditioning and it's set to about one degree. So somebody had asked, well, why don't we use a dehumidifier? And we did actually use a dehumidifier. I bought one, brought it out here, but it's so dusty. Uh, you know, that cord that's over there, the heating element, uh, you know, all that dust that's on it. These animals, you know, they produce a lot of dust. There's a lot of hay. So the thing got clogged up quite a bit and there's really way too much humidity in here to, um, for a dehumidifier. Uh, the other thing is dehumidifiers work in a certain range uh, and really anything below 15 degrees Celsius, they just don't work very well and they tend to freeze up. So the coils will freeze, and then it'll have to go through a defrost cycle and then it'll go back on and it's just not a good idea. You can use uh, something called silica bags or desiccant bags and what that is, uh, same type of material that's in, it's that little package in dry foods and in uh, medicine, and it says do not eat on it. Uh, those are desiccant bags uh, that are filled with a, a silica gel. And what they do is they absorb moisture. Uh, so what you could do is you can pick up at a hardware store a desiccant bag, and you hang that over a pail, and it absorbs moisture and drips down, uh, and you just empty the pail. Uh, so that will work in uh, like cold storage uh, rooms in, in a house uh, or in areas like this where it's colder out. So we don't have any heat lamps. I had actually wired up, there's a light here, uh, which is our light that we have on for the chickens. So they, um, they lay eggs. And originally, like there's one there on the other side of that beam and there's also another one. Oh, look at Prince's tail. Um, there's another one up, up, up here. Uh, and originally what I was thinking is we take heat lamps and hang them down into these areas to have this warm. But we actually never ended up needing that. You can actually see ice up there on the corner. Uh, but this is, you know, when we get into those cold temperatures, uh, this is what we do get. Uh, so a quick little thing on Prince here. He, uh, he sheds his tail off in the fall and grows it back over the winter so that in the spring, he's gonna have a nice, beautiful tail 
to show his girls for mating season. So there we go. All right, moving along here. Lucy, you stay out. Last video, I don't know if you go back and watch that, uh, you'll see that as I was walking away, I, so Lucy's back was in here. So we actually had to come out and uh, we were a little concerned. She didn't get into the food. I don't think she realized where it was. She kind of checked out the water and checked out this, uh, this kelp here and some grit and didn't really do too much. So there was a concern with that. You don't want goats in uh, eating a whole bunch of grain, which I've uh, talked about in the past. So heat lamps, if you have to use a heat lamp, our building is completely insulated, but there are buildings that, um, that are just barns that uh, have siding on them. And uh, people use heat lamps. Now the concern there is, uh, and this has happened, we've seen some other sanctuaries, uh, one down in Southern Ontario this past week, uh, lost their barn. Now, uh, the, I'm not sure why or how it happened, but uh, the only thing I can do is assume that a lot of these fires happen from, you know, electrical, uh, from heat lamps, probably a lot, in an area where there's hay. So those two can cause a problem. A heat lamp can get knocked down, can fall into a, a, a patch of hay, and of course, you know, heat up and catch on fire. So, uh, where do I have it? Well, I don't have it here. I have it, yes I do, I have it over here. Bear with me a second. So the way, this kit gate, the way we, um, the way we fix this, or the way uh, you should run a heat lamp in an area such as that is, I'll turn it around here, and if you look right over here, you'll see a heat lamp and you'll see a cage on it. So there's actually a cage that goes on there. Uh, now, this is not, uh, you know, it, it, it may not 100% solve the problem because it could still fall down and uh, still fall into the hay, but that's an extra added of protection. This one here, uh, actually that one has one on it as well. You can see the crisscross pattern. Uh, so you want to make sure that they do have those safety mechanisms and when hanging them up, uh, hang them up and maybe have, uh, you know, a chain or not just a piece of twine or something. Make sure it's fastened uh, securely and um, so it's not going to fall down. So that is, you know, you, you want to make sure that if, you're, if you've got your animals, uh, for the animals sake especially, is that you're not, um, you're not creating that danger for them. Now in this instance in Southern Ontario, uh, the barn did burn down. It was mainly uh, their hay. There's a lot of hay in there that they lost, so they're now looking for uh, hay uh, and donations and things of that nature. Uh, they did uh, save most animals. They are a rescue sanctuary that um, brings in probably about 4,000, I think it was around 4,000 animals they brought in last year. I'm not sure how many they have at one given time, but uh, they had lost, I think, a pig and a rabbit. So two animals were lost in that uh, barn fire, which is, you know, really good considering it could have been much worse. Uh, so another thing that we have done here is this is the power. The power that comes in to this building all runs through this plug here. It comes through here, and runs off and does all the other sections. Now it's a little hard to see, but this is a GFI. It's a ground fault interrupter. And what that means is it's the same kind of plug-in that you would find in your bathroom. And it has the little test button and the reset button and the little light there. Uh, and what that does is if, um, uh, because of humidity, and if there's a short, then what happens is it breaks that and it trips that breaker, which it has a few times. And Tara's been out here and she's like, there's no power in the barn yet the breaker is fine. So it's, it's this one. I think it's happened maybe twice in the last two or three years. Uh, but it does happen and it's a good safety. So just make sure, you know, wiring. Uh, some old buildings, of course, can have bad wiring. Uh, people that buy a, an old farm's homestead and they just, uh, you know, run with it. Just make sure, you know, all your wiring is good. It's all insulated. Uh, no birds are going to peck at it. No rabbits are going to chew it. Uh, we've got one inside that I've got to fix 
uh, because it was, and it wasn't plugged in, uh, it was in the nursery area and it was used to heat chicks. But we had unplugged those and we had put some rabbits in there. And of course the cord was lying there so the rabbit chewed right through it. Had that have been on, uh, the rabbit, it, you know, it could have ended much worse. Uh, and the rabbit probably, uh, well, who knows, might have made it, might not have made it. But uh, it's always good to make sure everything's unplugged too. Uh, just go through all that. So the frost here on the door is looking a little better. It's starting, you're actually able to see outside now. Let's go out and have a look at these guys. Hey guys. And you guys are out and up and at them, aren't ya? So Petey and Piper. Uh, now, there was a channel I've been watching and I know a lot of you have been asking me uh, or a few of you, anyway, uh, there's a channel, YouTube channel called uh, Happy Tales. Now, actually there's a sanctuary in Ontario called Happy Tales too, so it was a little confusing at first. Uh, but there was, she has a, a pig, and she's talked about uh, pigs, you know, once it gets cold out, they need to go inside. Um, not necessarily. Uh, they can remain outside, and these guys do remain outside, don't you? You just burrow into your hay. So it's minus five degrees Celsius out here. Uh, but the big thing is getting your animals accustomed to the cold weather. So these guys here have been outside the whole time. Now, if these guys came in as a rescue uh, and they were an inside pig, definitely we would have them inside uh, because you don't want to give them that shock to the system. But animals are, hey Carl, animals are uh, can get used to the weather. You can see Carl's nice thick fur here. And Billy, his, his little boy, he's uh, nice and fluffy, and they've got a layer underneath. Now, if, they, if these animals are inside, they're going to be accustomed to the temperature they're at. <coughs> Excuse me. Or, if there's an animal that's brought in from another area, like this one down in Texas, and shipped up to Canada in December, January, well, it's not accustomed to it. So it's not going to be ready for the cold temperatures. Right, Snow? Are you just waiting for spring? <laughs> You're just watching Carl, aren't you? Yeah, Carl loves you. <laughs> Carl loves everybody. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Patches is actually pretty... Uh, a lot of this is, uh, is eating, though. She's uh, probably been eating a bunch. Tara would have brought hay out. Uh, and now she's got to process that. So a lot of people ask, oh, is she pregnant? Well, hopefully she is, but she wouldn't be showing that much right now. It's a little too early. She's still got a, uh, she still has a couple months, six weeks, I guess, to go. And how are you guys all doing out here? I see you have a Christmas tree, don't you? Barry's enjoying it. How is that, Barry? This is what's going on? Hey? <laughs> Oh, the rabbit as well. Uh, all of the geese are out. So Tara opened the gate this morning and let all the geese out. And they're all hanging outside like they love to do. All that noise. All the noise. Here's the tree from last year, actually. Uh, Tara's girlfriend brought this tree out and uh, the stand was actually frozen into it because they put it outside. There was still water in it, froze to it. So she brought the whole thing and threw it in. And you can see how this is now. It's been stripped down. And now it's decorative. Why not, right? You guys enjoying the balmy weather? The Manitoba January balmy weather. <laughs> uh, these actually we had donated. Uh, I don't know what they're actually supposed to be, if they're supposed to be little houses or what. Um, it looks like it, and they work great. If they go in them, I see the far one, there's a, there's a duck in there, but they just generally don't go in there. Who wants to go inside, right? No, you guys want to stay out. All right, guys. It's supposed to be another couple weeks of nice weather. What's with your goatee? It's all like, you need a, you need a style. <laughs> you need to get some style there, bud. And the sheeps. Sheeps! Now, of course, sheep, well, yeah, they got 
they got a beautiful coat on and that coat is they're actually pretty skinny hey Lambert so if you look in here like they like that's deep <laughs> you got a nice coat eh? hey bud yeah Lambert Barry though uh, Barry doesn't he we haven't shaved him yet and he came in just over a year ago so it'd be interesting to see um, you know if we're gonna if we're gonna shave him or not uh, but he doesn't seem to be uh, doesn't seem to have a lot of a lot of wool on him do you bud all right so another thing is shelters cold weather you need to have some kind of shelters and it's just an area where the animals can get out of the elements uh, have a roof over their head and have some hay uh, we put hay in, hay's the eating hay, you can use straw, straw's a little bit better uh, of an insulator than hay is. Um, oh, gee. <laughs> uh, that was funny. So that's them, that's the pigs. And by the way, we did not make the mound. We spread this hay out throughout this whole area and they actually went and, and plowed it all into this mound. Uh, and that's where they are. So they sleep, then they come out, they eat, poop, and they poop in the same spot all the time, and uh, then they go back to bed. So basically, you want to uh, make sure that you have enough buildings and you have things planned out before you have animals uh, in a cold environment. And, you know, we didn't do a whole lot of research in the beginning, but we didn't get a lot of animals fast in the beginning. Uh, so we started out with some rabbits and then some chickens and we kind of slowly learned there and uh, then got into the larger animals. So uh, if you live in a cold environment uh, it's good to plan things out. Make sure you have uh, enough, uh, enough building space and enough enclosures to have your animals and uh, that they're comfortable. So that's it for this week. Uh, I hope you had uh, a wonderful beginning of the new year and we will see you next week. Hopefully it warms up even more. Take care. Bye-bye.